John chapter 21. And after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise showed he himself. So Jesus showed up many times to many people after he was risen from the grave. And it's an amazing thing to look at too. He, as far as the Bible records, he never shows himself to any unbelievers. These, oh, there were together Simon, Peter, and Thomas called Didymus, and Nathanael of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, James and John, and two other of his disciples. There are seven men, four are missing. Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. They said unto him, We also go with thee. And they went forth, entered into a ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. John 15, 5. But when the morning was now come, 6 a.m., when the morning was now come, Peter is in trouble. Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? And he ans answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side, which would be the starboard side of the ship. So they were fishing on the wrong side. And ye shall find. <clears throat> I got something in my throat. They, they cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. This is the last recorded miracle in the Gospel of John. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved, John, said unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisherman's coat upon, unto him, for he was naked, and there was many much to say about that little parenthesis mark there, and did cast himself into the sea. The other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were, 200 cubits. Interesting information here. Dragging the net with the fishes. And as soon as they were come into, as soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there. Peter is in trouble. There's morning, there's a fire of coals, and there's Jesus and Peter. And the disciple that Jesus loved. Remember when, when we read that story in John about the about the, uh, the cock crow and all that? John went up to the maid and spoke to her, and then Peter gets in trouble. He's warming himself by the fire. Jesus is inside talking with the, the chief priest and all that. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. Jesus said unto him, Bring of the fish which you have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, a hundred and fifty and three. Means something that the Lord counted these fishes and recorded in the Bible. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broke. Contra of Luke 56, Luke 5, verse 6, where Jesus had cast the nets, and he cast only one net, and the net was about to break. Because Peter only cast one where the Lord told him to cast nets. Now here the Lord tells him, cast a net. There is 153 fish. It is being dragged to the beach shore and it doesn't break it's a miracle scripture with scripture it's a miracle Jesus said unto them come and dine and none of the disciples durst ask him who art thou knowing that it was the Lord so they know who it is he said why didn't they recognize Jesus before because he was far away I uh, gave how many furlongs somewhere here. <laughs> Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them 
and the fish likewise. Like the day he fed the 5,000. Like the day he fed the 4,000. Now, I mean, there is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples. Three times. After that, he was risen from the dead. We're going to see that in Acts 1. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? The fishermen? The friends? The boat? The fish? What? What is Jesus pointing to? He says unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He says unto him, Feed my lambs. It's an action. It's a verb. It's a do. It's the Lord and Peter and no one else in this conversation. No other disciples meant it's Jesus and Peter. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. He says unto him, Feed my sheep. Going from the little lambs to the sheep. That's what Peter's going to do in Acts chapter 2. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? I don't know him. Blankety blank blank blank. I don't know him. I was never with him. I'm not part of him. Do you love me, Peter? Do you love me, Peter? Can you just see Peter kicking his feet along the sand, looking over at that fire like, oh, man. There's Jesus. The Bible says when he did that, Jesus turned around and looked at him. Peter took off weeping. There is Jesus now facing him face to face, eye to eye. Do you love me? Peter was grieved because he had said to him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Love, with res love is responsibility. Without responsibility, it's lust. I told you, Peter, I told you, Frank, out word of God, you would deny me three times. Oh, no, Lord, not me. I will. Really? Do you love me? Do you love me? You know, I figured the third time Peter was getting a little annoyed. Like he was getting annoyed that they kept coming to him on that little balcony. He's cussing. Verily, very, I say unto thee. And he's speaking to Peter. When thou was young, thou girdest thyself. You got dressed by yourself when you were young. You put your own clothes on. And put your belt on. And walkest where thou wouldest. You went wherever you wanted to go. But when thou shalt be old. Older than what he is now. Thou shalt stretch forth thy hands. Thou shalt put your hands straight out. And another shall gird thee. Now it said that Peter died crucifixion upside down. He demanded not to be like Christ. Well, another thing he was not like Christ was he had clothes on. Someone put clothes on him. Someone stretched forth his hands like Jesus did. Peter died on a cross. And carry thee whither thou wouldst not. He's a prisoner. Now Jesus went all the way to the cross even being bound obediently to the will of the Father. This is not where Peter wants to go when this happens. But it's going to happen. Now, it's amazing that Jesus told Peter this right after, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? When Peter said, no, I don't know him. 
No, I don't know him. Blankety blank blank. I don't know him. The lesson that here that Peter, that Jesus is teaching Peter, you better watch your big mouth and listen to me. Because in Second Peter one fourteen, I believe is where Peter says, "The Lord told me how I'm going to die." Peter got the message from that night, the cock crew, and here Jesus is on the beach with him. Peter has now begun to, hey, if God said it, I'm shutting my big mouth and I'm obeying. Peter has grown. This little thing, and it's what, three verses, three long verses? Peter, do you love me? Yeah, I love you. Peter, do you love me? You stop it already, I love you. Peter, do you love me? Why? No, it's not nothing like that. It is Peter looking in the eyes of God, looking in the eyes of Jesus, like looking at that fire and looking at it back. Those tears he shed. No one, the Bible doesn't even say, he just said he broke out in tears and left. No one said where he went and what happened. I, I guarantee the way the Lord is dealing with Peter now, that broke his heart. Because Peter gets right here, and the Lord tells him something. Then this spank he signified by what death he should glorify God. Peter, when he had spoken this, he said unto him, follow me. Where is Peter's big mouth? Where is Peter saying, not so, Lord? No. He's not playing that game no more. Peter learned a lesson. And this lesson learned here. Where Jesus speaks to him. This is why he gets up in Acts chapter 2 and starts preaching. Then Peter turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following. John, here comes John. See, they weren't there. It's Jesus and Peter alone. Here comes John. In this story, you see throughout the Old Testament over and over. Moses is coming to Egypt. Here comes Aaron. David's out in the battlefield. Here comes Jonathan. This plays out over and over and over. Which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Well, that's funny. They still don't know who's the one that sold Jesus out. When we read earlier, we said that there were uh, what is it, four disciples missing. In all actuality, what they know right now, there's five of them missing. We already knew Judas is gone and all that. But in this chapter, five of them are missing to him. They have no idea it was Judas. They didn't know when Judas came into the garden, it was him that sold out. How's that? Judas was so slick in that garden. So came up. What happened, what's the Bible record? He came up and kissed Jesus, and they took him and bound him and gave him. As far as they knew, Judas was being a friend of Jesus. Jesus said, "Friend." Peter seeth him. Peter seeing him saith to Jesus, "Lord, and what shall this man do?" Jesus said unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow me. Don't worry about him. Worry about yourself. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren that the disciple should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him, he shall not die, but if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? That is the last word recorded in the Gospels of Jesus to say anything. That's speaking about John when he when he writes the book of Revelation. There's one there's one place in the Bible where I have Mark and a question mark. He speaks to the, uh, something I forget what this before the mountain transfiguration, and one of you shall not die, something like that, taste death, whatever that. That could be John. John sees Jesus Christ come in his glory at the second advent. No one has. I haven't. Paul hasn't. 
Paul never saw Jesus for Jesus. He saw a light and heard a voice. John, when he writes the book of Revelation, he said, I see uh, Jesus on the, on the white horse with the King of King and Lord. No one's ever seen that. And Peter's worried about John. What about John? Peter, mind your own business. You got enough to talk about. You got enough to worry about. The way you are, don't worry about John. John's doing okay. And Peter, man, when we get in the book of Acts, he's got some life. Because he, he will again tell God, oh, not so. When he sees that sheet with all the foot, rise up and eat. Not so. You know, he went back to the old nature. Paul had to pull Peter off the side one time saying, Peter, you just did wrong. See, Peter still has it in the nature, but we see his heart. He's right. Yeah. Now, that, uh, when he was eating dinner, and it was a, there was a Jewish guy that got saved, or a Gentile guy, and the, the other group, and Peter took off, left him there in, in the consulate, like, you know. Poor guys, like, well, what do I do? What do I do? This is the disciple which testify of all things, which wrote these things. We know that his testimony is true. All right. Who is the author of the Gospel of John? Right here, John. Who is the disciple that Jesus loved? And John. John is signifying, this is my Gospel. I witnessed it. You could pull John into a courtroom and say, hey, you swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me, me. I will tell the truth by God that me wrote this gospel. And I swear to everything that happened. And look at all the witnesses he's got. Peter, James, Philip, Andrew, Jesus, Bartholomew, let me just go on. Nicodemus. You could spend months, if not a year, with all the people that are mentioned in James, I mean John, for a testimony that these things are true. Call all the people he, he helped. Call all the people at the, that came from that woman at the well. Call all the people who are standing there with that woman that was about to be stoned for adultery. Call all the all the people that John the Baptist preached to. There's a lot of people, isn't there? And you're going to believe a few writers that say in the beginning something, nothing, something, nothing, nothing from something, something, and no one was ever to see that? Well, dinosaurs were born in this layer of dirt and all, no one was there to see that? Just one gospel alone, look at all the names, look at all the people that are not named. At least 9,000 people in the Gospel of John saw Jesus Christ and had dinner with him. At least. I'm not even counting the Last Supper. I'm not even counting this supper yet. I'm counting the, the feeding with the bread and fish. 9,000 people come in the courtroom and say, yeah, that was Jesus. That's just the men. At least. The man that was blind who didn't even know who Jesus was testified. Pilate. All the Roman soldiers, including that one said, truly, that was the Son of God. He was wrong. It is the Son of God. And this is interesting. You want to have fun with this one? And there are also many other things which Jesus did. So everything Jesus done is not just written in the Gospels. The which, what he's done, if they should be written every one I suppose John supposes that even the world itself could not contain the book that should be written if Matthew Mark and Luke and John were to sit down write their four Gospels and all four of them write everything that Jesus has done let's say you break it down between those four writers Everything that Jesus done, this entire world would be filled with books and you still wouldn't be able to. Jesus was busy. Busy beyond our beliefs and beyond our knowledge. I would hate to bring that Bible to, to church. Everything. Genesis. Now we're getting to Moses. 
Let's call Moses up. Jesus said, I am. Well, who was the one that spoke out of the bush? I am. Uh, God, if they ask me, what's your name? I am. That I am. Jesus, what's your? I am. So in your, your entire Bible records what Jesus has done and still yet has not recorded all that Jesus has done. Ready? Let me ask you a question. We know that New Jerusalem <coughs> has, a, has a, a street of gold, correct? It has jaspers and all the gemstones, correct? We know that it has 12 gates, correct? What kind of mansion is he building us? Well, he says he's building a mansion for us. So he's building. He's busy right now building. And he built the roads with the things that we think are precious. Yep. We're going to be walking on those things. Yep. Big giant pearls. Imagine the, the clam had to spit that thing up. I mean, you just tell me in four gospels that's all Jesus did in three and a half years. That, that's that's not much. Every single day of his life, he done something for the honor of the Father. 12 hours, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And the Bible records other places, and even at night, he was working all night. And the multitude of all those minutes, let's just take the three and a half years he had the ministry. Never mind 12 years old, he's, he's baffling the, the, the people at the temple. Let's forget about that. Let's forget about his childhood, the things he's doing. Let's take the three and a half years of ministry. Can you imagine all the people that were touched by him? Some way, miracles, devils, cures, leprosy. And then when you think about, John says, we can't even record everything he's done. Imagine, imagine all the instances he had with this, these 12 disciples. Four fishermen and a tax collector. You know they were full days. And the Gospels record Jesus rebuking them. You know he rebuked them more than what we read. You know it. You know Peter had more cases of open that big mouth than what we read. I'm not picking on Peter. Come on. If you were to write a diary about the life that you live and what you've done, it'd be pretty big. But you haven't done most of the stuff that Jesus has done. And if you think numbers is bad, you wait till we see the account with all the Jesus. Wait till we see how many people are actually healed. How many people are, And then, let me get down to the final where I'm getting with all this. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes him should not perish but have everlasting life. When he died on that cross, he died for the world. The Bible says many will be saved, not all. All the people that John said we can't contain in the book. And how many people stood there when he died for them? Not many compared to all that he's done. So don't think the whole world is coming after you. Don't think the mega churches are right because of the numbers. Don't think because of the vast amount of people. No. There is possibly, and I'm going to throw it out there, and if I'm wrong, I'll plead the blood of Jesus Christ. If I'm wrong, I will. Three and a half years, you mean to tell me there's not some way, somehow, he didn't touch every Jew in Israel? Some way or somehow. Somebody did not go home to a Jewish house without saying, I saw Jesus today, you won't believe what I saw. Mama, look, my, my hand is back. Look, honey, I'm home. I don't have no more leprosy. Look at my child that was a lunatic. He's well. That was a great dinner we had. Man, can't you believe all we ate and it still was more? You can't believe. All the stories, all that came into the homes. Jesus was widely known in Israel. I guarantee that fact. There must not have been one house that did not mention Jesus. And even in Samaria. That one complete town, the, the people that lost their pot, their pot bellies, you know they went back. That guy who was a maniac, the Bible says there was two of them. The Bible says Jesus said, go home and tell your family. Go witness. 
Jesus was worldwide news in the known world then. And the word of God today is worldwide right now. You can get it. Except for nations that don't have electricity and internet, you can get the Bible anywhere you want. 